Hey, welcome back. In this video, I wanna talk about how to work with alerts in Defender for IoT. Now, I'm gonna do another video where I teach you how to triage alerts with some real-world activity. But in this video, let's just become familiar and acclimated with the interface. So we're logged into my sensor and I clicked on alerts on the left side. Now at the very top here, you've got this freeform search field. So I can immediately search for alerts by keywords. So I could type in something like the S7 protocol, hit enter and see alerts related just to S7. I can also change my advanced filters to say, hey, show me specific alerts for some of these different types of devices that you dis discovered, or I can do it by device group. Now this is kind of cool because, let's remove this filter. Device group is kind of cool because this allows you to look at things like, hey, show me alerts related to DNS, or maybe alerts related to unauthorized devices. So use these filters to your advantage. Security just says, here's all the security related alerts and operational just filters on operational alerts. Now I can also go through, let's clear the filter. I can also go through and export all alerts to a CSV file. That might be useful if I need to give this to an incident responder, maybe from a third party. Uh, maybe I need to put this into a report or a, or a PowerPoint deck and clean it up a little bit. If I click on the double check marks, that just acknowledges all alerts. Or if I click on the book icon, this says learn and acknowledge. I'll tell you more about learn here in just a second. So let's go ahead and click on an alert and this will bring up the alert view. At the top, I've got some different commands. I can click on the clipboard, which will show alert and event timeline. I'll do another video about event timeline here coming up. I have these two download buttons where I can download the PCAP file. Remember Defender for IoT is on a span port on your switch and it's passively watching all network traffic and it's understanding it. And so it's basically a packet capture. And so here I can download that PCAP. And then I can generate a report on this, which we'll talk about in another video, or I can pin it. Pin is interesting because it allows you to kind of add it to your favorites here. And then those might be the alerts I'm currently investigating or working with, so on and so forth. Now inside the alert, we give you the direct packet capture uh, piece that we alerted on. And you can see here under protocol data. And then I can click on, uh, or I can browse down here to remedi remediation steps and get recommendations on how to remediate. I can also click on these devices and it will bring me directly back to the devices map where I can then work with those devices, understand the relationship, and, and filter on that. Now, the learn button, what does that do? Well, that says, hey, Defender for IoT, this is a, a expected behavior. This is authorized behavior. It's supposed to happen. So I want you to learn from it so that you do not alert on this again. That's what learn does. Acknowledge simply says, hey, Defender for IoT, I got it. We're gonna acknowledge this alert. We're gonna close it out. We're gonna archive it. Maybe I'm finished investigating, or maybe this, again, maybe it's a false positive or a false alarm, and I wanna acknowledge it. So folks, that's how you work with alerts. It's pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, here's an example of malware. So this is where we saw some malware behavior that we think is the Triton malware. And this is coming from Microsoft's threat intelligence feed on these two devices, and then I can go through and do remediation. Now I do have a speaker icon up here, which just says mute, don't alert when this event is detected. So that's an option as well. Uh, you know, maybe I'm running attack simulations or whatnot. There's different types of alerts. There's policy violations, malware, there's uh, anomalous behavior uh, type of alerts, there's operational alerts. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Here's a policy violation. So you get the idea. So this is how you work with alerts. Now, before we go, I wanna show you custom alerts. This is really cool. So custom alerts is where uh, maybe you might have some, some threat intelligence on some, some uh, up and coming emerging attacks in the OT space. Well, this is where I can go in and create a custom alert rule to alert me when that behavior is discovered. And so I have my different categories I could choose from here. I can then give it a name. I could tell it, hey, here's my source and destination IP addresses or MAC addresses. Tell it to, you know, what the schedule is. Uh, hey, is this an alert or is it just an event? What's the severity? So on and so forth. But check this out. As you change the category, it dynamically changes the condition. So there's DNS. I can do query and type. But if I go down here to something like uh, RPC, I've got message type, or if I go down to something like the Siemens S7 Plus protocol, I've got some different things here too. 
Now you kind of have to know what you're looking for, right? But once you know that, it's extremely easy here to create an alert. And again, I can just go in and create my function and save it. So definitely take advantage of create alerts. I'll do another video on this at some point where maybe we get into some custom alerts and we'll, we'll create some maybe based on some emerging threats. Okay, folks. So uh, in the next video, we're gonna talk about event timeline. And then from there, we're gonna get into reports and data mining. So stay tuned, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.